Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 106. We're going to talk about systems of three equations again. I know, you loved them the first time, and now they're going to be even better. Uh, we're going to jump right into the first example, and I'm going to teach you what you need to know as we go. But first, I want to show you what's up. Look at these little freak children. 2x plus, or uh, forget about the numbers. I don't care about the numbers. x plus y equals a number. x minus z equals a number. y minus z equals a number. Okay, so what we have in these problems is an x and a y and a z, but each one of the equations has only two of the three. What? Yes, we can do this. It's going to be really fun. You will feel so freaking smart when you're done. But what I want to show you is that we don't want to copy it like this. This is unhelpful. This is just a big mess. So what we want to do is copy the problem out of the book and create columns so that the X's are together, the Y's are together, and the Z's are together. That will help us see what offsets against what else um, and is a much better way to organize the problem. So don't be like John and write a jumble. Stretch them out and make columns in your paper. So I'll show you how I do I'm not going to write it the wrong way. John can just, <laughs> I was going to say, John can just suck it, but that's not appropriate. I would never say that to John. Even if he were alive. I mean, he's with us now, is my belief. 2y. Okay. You guys finish copying that. This is a system. It's an A and a B and a C. Okay, double check. I'll double check while you copy. These are my Z's, remember that. Okay. Now, just like we did before, we look down the columns and decide which pair we would like to eliminate first, right? Um, and what comes into my mind, it's kind of annoying because normally we look for a positive and a negative, right? So that they'll already offset each other. I mean, if we can get the same coefficient, it's even better. But we're looking for that positive negative combo um, that makes our job that much easier. And we don't have it in this problem. I'm just going to start with the x's and I'm going to multiply b times minus 2. Okay, so I'll first I'll write that out here. If I multiply b times minus 2, I get minus 2x plus 4z equals positive 6, right? Change the sign, change the sign. Beautiful. We're going to add that with a. All right, I'm going to come back and look at these some more, so I don't want to mess this up. I want this all to stay pretty, so that's why I'm just copying the two I'm working with down here. And notice that I'm keeping my columns going, even though... I am working on another part of the problem. Okay, so I'm going to add it to A. A is 2x plus 3y equals minus 4. Now, look what happens. I add. Those cancel. I get 3y plus 4z equals 2. Am I right? Let's see if John agrees with me. 3y plus 4z equals 2. Yes. Okay. Now, look what we did. Look what we did. We created a y and a z and then a plain number. Look what we have left in c. A y and a z and a plain number. Oh, they match. So now what we're going to do is we're going to add this to c. 2y minus z equals minus 6. We're going to combine these two because now we're just down to two, so we were just doing basic elimination, right? So I'm going to, let's see, let's let's cancel the z's here, right? Uh, because we've already got the plus and minus. So we'll just multiply this one, c, times four. So that will become, I'm gonna rewrite it just underneath here, because this I like. This is my a plus minus two times b, right? That's how I got that. Now this is going to be 
four times, this is C, four times C is gonna be eight Y minus four Z minus 24. So I'm gonna squiggle that out gently, right? This is four C actually down here. Now we can add and we get 11 Y, oh, Z's cancel, equals minus 22. John, are you even kidding me right now? So we get Y equals minus two. Do you see how cute and fun and like not devilishly hard this is? Okay, and then what are we gonna do? We're going to figure out how to work backwards and get the X and the Z. Here I've got an equation with Y and Z with some nice cute little numbers. So let's use that. Three times minus two, right? Because that's my value for Y. Plus four Z equals two. This is negative six. So if I add six to both sides, I get four Z equals eight. John, Z equals positive two. And now our final step, we have to solve for X. So I gotta go back up here and look at my list. Oh, this is pretty easy. I can probably do this one. X minus two Z, Z is two, equals minus three. That's four. So if I add four, X equals one. There it is. Let me make sure I got it right before I gloat too much. Yes, and we can write it as an ordered triple, right? One minus two, positive two. Make sure you get it in the right order. It happened again on, my, on the last round of tests, the um, March midterm. I don't remember who it was. I think it was either an Algebra two student or an advanced mathematics student, they wrote the list correctly here, but then when they copied it over, one of them was wrong, copied over here, right? So I think I gave them 4.9 points because even though this was technically wrong, I could see they had the answer right here. They just went crazy and copied it wrong, all right? So that is good to remember. Okay, yay, we got it right. Not that bad, right? We combine two of them, and if we're if if our, we play our cards right, the resulting equation matches up with the equation that's left. Okay, we have just one more to do, and then I'm going to return you to your boring normal life that is nowhere near as cool as this. One hundred six point two. Again, I'm not going to copy the problem the way John wrote it because he just smushes it all in together. I'm going to spread them out into lovely columns. He at least gives us everything in order. The first one starts with the Y term. Whoops, it's minus. Ignore that. Now you can see, I really go hard on this idea of spreading them out and putting a lot of space in between them. I create a lot of space between the columns and I skip in between the rows too, don't I? That's because you have to see it on camera and if I smoosh my numbers together, you're gonna be like, what is she even talking about? I mean, you might be saying that anyway, but you'd say it for sure if I smooshed my numbers. So obviously you don't have to be quite as dramatic in your presentation as I am, unless, I don't know, maybe you're live streaming your math on YouTube. That would be really cool, right? You know how, how gamers do that? Maybe you guys should like, <laughs> you should stream your homework. Oh my gosh, I think I'm on to something. Maybe I'll stream homework. Um, anyway, you can tighten this up a little bit, but if you're finding these problems to be confusing or overwhelming, bring them out a little bit and you put more space in there. It helps to see what you've got. Okay, so I am looking for a place where I've got positives and negatives going in pleasing directions. I like the Y's. 
Now it's gonna take a little bit of work though, because I'm gonna have to multiply the top one by two. So that's, I'm gonna multiply A by two, and then I'm gonna have to multiply C by three, right? And that will give me six and negative six. Okay, here we go. A, I'm just gonna put a line here so that I can see this is where my work begins. 2A, so I'm multiplying this by two. 6Y minus 4Z equals negative 24. And then I'm multiplying C by three. 3X three minus 6Y equals 18. All right, then we add, praise the Lord, that's gone. 3x. So this is, I call this 2a plus 3c. That's how I got this row. Minus 4z equals, and let's see, that will be minus 6, right? Okay, now if I've done it right, then b should match to these letters. b is an x and a z. Perfect. So I'm going to put b right here. Um, and I've got 2x minus 3z equals negative 4. Five. Well, there's nothing super obvious that we can do there, right? Um, maybe we should just attack the x's and we'll multiply this first thing. It was 2a plus 3c. Let's multiply that by just plain 2. And then this B row, we'll multiply that by negative 3, and that will give us a 6 and a negative 6. All right, let's give it a try. So I'm multiplying the top row by 2. 6X minus 8Z equals negative 12. And I'm multiplying the second row by negative 3. Negative 6X plus 9Z. Tried to make that an X. Caught myself. Okay, that times negative 3 is positive 9, and this times negative 3 is positive 15. Now, we have liftoff. Those are gone. Z equals 3. We don't even have to divide. It worked out perfectly. I think John is a champ. Just a champ. All right. Which one do we want to use now to solve for x and y? Anything is fine. Um, let's do y next. 3y minus 2 times z, which is 3, equals negative 12. So this is 6. We can add 6 to both sides. I hope you're following my algebra. I'm whizzing through it. Right? I'm just doing simple algebra to solve these. That cancels. 3y equals negative 6, and I get y equals negative 2, okay? And now I need to solve for x. I really like this one for x. x minus 2 times negative 2 equals 6. Again, you can use any of the equations that we've created, any of them. You're just looking for the right combination of letters. But I like to try to keep the numbers simple if I can help it too. All right, this is positive four. So we're gonna have to subtract four from both sides. X equals two. Look, it worked out. We didn't have to do any division on this one either. So my final answer, I'll write it up here, is two, negative two, three. That's my ordered triple. We got it right. Yes. Tell me, even if you could just like barely understand this and we're hanging on by the seat of your, the skin of your teeth, that's the way the expression goes, the seat of your pants is the other way. Um, this is impressive, isn't it? Doesn't this look hard and complicated in the way we kept multiplying and combining everything? And like this wacky thing where they don't, um, they don't all have the same letters. Every equation has a weird random set of letters. Whew, this is this is serious business, you guys. You're not fooling around anymore. Not that you ever were. Okay, that is the end of this lesson. I hope it was illuminating, enjoyable, and above all, intellectually satisfying.
I'm done. Goodbye.